What's up everybody, the vlog starting right now. We're gonna be taking a look at the 2018 Tiguan SEL Premium. This is all new here, folks. Okay, we've done a ton of videos with just regular SELs and S model, but the Premium, oh boy, this is gonna be exciting. What we're gonna do is we got Morgan, he's gonna put some gas in the Tiguan for us. Take a look at this though, while we're waiting on Morgan. That is the 2017 GTI Sport, and it is sporty. Yes, it is. But all right, let's head over to the gas station with Morgan and see what's popping today. Now, Morgan is a Volkswagen fan as well. Seems like everybody that works here likes Volkswagen. And we did a video with Morgan, I guess about a month or two ago, about him talking about getting in some accidents and how basically Volkswagen saved his little life. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, on, not on a joke though. It, it did, okay? He's been in a couple accidents with Volkswagens and uh, he came out just fine. As you can see, he's driving here with us today. Now, you were in some pretty hefty accidents though, right? Uh, yeah, the last one I think was the biggest. And it, I mean, this is like stuff where it totals the car out. Yeah, like the car is not drivable after the accident. <laughs> Man, so yeah, you don't want to get in those kind of accidents, but sometimes we can't control it. It just happens, right? And that was in a Passat, you said, last this last one? TDI Jetta. I a think. TDI Jetta, okay. All right. The last one was a manual. Pretty cool, so a TDI manual Jetta. Look at this, guys. When do you see a minivan that looks like a hearse? Not very often. So we're gonna put some gas in the the, uh, the Tiguan right now. It's got around a quarter a tank. Pretty sure uh, it's 2.0 turbo, right, Morgan? I think so, too, yeah. Yeah, 2.0 turbo. We just had the 2.0 liter turbo Atlas come in on Wednesday, which was just two days ago. If you haven't watched the video with me test driving that, you gotta watch it. Um, the reaction that I had from the 2.0 liter turbo Atlas was amazing. Let's just say, you might want to pick the two liter over the V6 on the Atlas. You're gonna to have to drive it for yourself and see. All right, hang tight, we're gonna go get some gas. Now, I will tell you, the SEL Premium Tiguan definitely looks a lot sportier, and it really all starts right here in this front end on this car. Um, take a look at these headlights, pretty sweet. Just the way they're designed, they're LED. I mean, the whole headlight assembly is LED. The fogs look good. It just looks a little more aggressive. And it has something to do with this right here. Now it's got that LED light bar that lights up during the day or night. So uh, I'm excited to show you all this tonight. It'll be our first time really doing a night review with an SEL Premium. We're testing out the adaptive cruise control on the 2018 Tiguan SEL Premium. Uh, right now, speed is set for 40 miles per hour. Again, my uh, feet are not on the accelerator pedal, pedal or the brake pedal right now just cruising along here. I think 40 miles per hour is a pretty good um, pretty good mile per hour to be set up on adaptive cruise control. I mean, unless you're on the interstate and you're traveling and you know you're you know you're going to be going over 50, 60, you know, miles per hour, maybe have it set higher. But just for like stop and go traffic, cruising around town, things like that, 40 is a pretty good uh, pretty good range there. Other than that, I have mine set up on about two car links as you can see there. And uh, one thing, the uh, the digital cockpit here is really nice. Um, that's an all LCD screen right back there. So that's another nice feature you'll get on your uh, premium model Tiguan for 2018. And of course on the premium model on your Atlas. Um, these, uh, these systems seem to be pretty much exactly the same. Let's come up to a stop here. And uh, yes, the Tiguan will stop as you're seeing there. Now one thing I noticed on the Atlas is it did not go when cars were going. And someone told me to actually uh, hit these buttons over here, and uh, well, that didn't that didn't work. Someone, a guy commented at some point saying, if you hit the acceleration button, it will, uh, <clears throat> you know, make the car go again. Uh, that didn't seem to be true on that particular test just now. And once you do hit the gas pedal after you're at a stop, um, you will have to hit uh, set right there to go ahead and activate that system once again. As you can see, we're we're activated now. We got a little Ford Ranger right in front of us. I'm doing pretty good. Um, very nice system though, I like it. And, you know, traffic like this, like I'm gonna go ahead and hit the gas pedal a little bit and do it on my own. You know, it may be easier for you to just control the car on your own. But again, if you are in bumper to bumper traffic on the interstate, something like that, I can see how this feature can be nice. You can relax a little bit more and, uh, and not have to use your legs as much in traffic. But again, if you're at a stop, you'll have to uh, you have to you know hit the accelerator and go, and then reactivate the system once again right here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and activate it again right now, just since we're uh, 
you know, we're traveling. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, raise the bar here. Let's go ahead and zoom in and have a look. See that car stopping in front of me? The car almost stops, but it takes it, it takes it a second to get back up and go. You know, when you got a lot of cars behind you, you know, while you're driving, you know, it's nice not to sit there and have to wait for this thing to slow all the way down before you start moving again. That's what kind of holds up traffic, you know, when you're on the roads. It's still activated right now. I haven't touched the gas pedal. What I was going to do is go ahead and bump up the, uh, the car links there on the screen a little bit. There we go. Let's take it up another notch. Take it up one more notch, okay? So that, that see, that's stopping me just about right there to that Subaru Forester. Again, though, as you can see, this system works out really well. You also have some features like blind spot monitoring system that's on the mirror right out there. So if someone's in your blind spot, you can see exactly uh, what's going on. And uh, and on the SEL Premium, the camera systems on the, the Tiguan, they get even better. They really do. Um, you know, we basically trying to look and see but yeah the camera systems are gonna be a lot better you're gonna have that 360 type camera view on your screen there and uh, that's due to having a camera in the front of the car one in the back and cameras on your mirrors to help out with that and it's got a lot of the great sensors on the car so if you're backing up or going forward into a parking spot you know it lets you know when you're getting a little too close to something so you don't bump your car into, into that which again that's a great feature to have especially if you're in a parking garage or really anywhere that you're parking in a tight space and I would say that's also a good feature to have for elderly people because uh, my wife's grandmother she's 75 76 she has a older uh, you know one of those crown Victorias and uh, within the last year or so uh, we went to see her not too long ago at her house and I noticed there was a bunch of dents and dings all over her car. The bumper had a big scuff and I said, Granny, what is going on here? She said, uh, I'm just getting old and, you know, bumping into things. And uh, she's done bumped into the, under her carport, into the little, some kind of pole there that holds uh, the awning up over her carport and things like that. So again, <laughs> you know, for her, this would be a great feature to have on a car. But again, unfortunately, sometimes some elderly folks just can't afford a car this expensive or with this much technology on it so uh, to each his own but I guess granny will just have to keep bumping into things in her old Ford Crown Victoria because I don't see a Tiguan like this in her uh, in her budget or future anytime soon unfortunately <laughs> Every time I say I'm gonna do something about this Tiguan, I seem to get sidetracked on the uh, on the navigation screen. Again, we're in the SDL Premium. I've been wanting to do this, so let's just do it right now. Um, first off, let me explain something to you. When uh, if you want to get that up on the screen right there, yeah. From what I can tell right now, being in the car, when you hit nav over here, this is what you're gonna see on the screen right there for nav position, all that. Um, when you actually get a route in there and you're heading to some place, it's going to put the speed up there and everything, you know, the mile per hour that, that you posted, the speed limit, all that good stuff. If you hit nav again over here, see what I'm talking about, you got your screen there. If you hit it again, that you get the compass right there and then you get this over here. Let's go ahead and hit start. The route is being calculated. Okay, as you can see that went back to that, that went back to that over there. And she talks to you and all that good stuff tells you what's going on. This is a full digital dash here. You know, that whole thing is a big LCD screen right there, which looks really nice. Um, the only thing, when your fingers were on there and stuff like that, it does smudge up a little bit. But you know, that's pretty uh, common on, on any, any car with a, with a screen inside of it. You know, especially a touch screen. Let's hit the road here and let's see what it does while we're going down the highway. Uh, you know, because right now we're in a parking lot at a, another, a car dealership. Let's hit the highway and see how this works for us. Once we get on the highway, it should pop up the speed limit, and it sure did. As you can see, speed limit's right over there on the top right-hand side, which is nice. I like that. And then you got your display right there in the middle, doing a good job. Um, you can switch, you know, this up a little bit by just hitting these buttons over here 
29 feet. So you can move all that around and kind of customize it a little, customize it a little bit, you know, zoom in, zoom out, all that good stuff. But yeah, very nice setup inside the Volkswagen Tiguan. It's been a great car to review. I mean, just so many great features on it. Again, like I said, it would be nice if they could put the backup camera right in there. So when you in reverse, you can see exactly what you're looking at straight ahead instead of having to look over that way. You know, you can't always get everything you wish for. It's giving me an arrow saying straight ahead, you know. So it's going to give me turn by turn directions on that screen right there. And then I can switch back over to that right there. All right, if you got any questions about the Tiguan or the Volkswagen Atlas, At excuse me, Volkswagen Atlas or any new Volkswagen, Feel free to send me a comment. I work with a Volkswagen store and I'm in their store just about every day of the week. So let me know. I don't mind filming stuff and getting it on camera for you so we can all learn about it. Thank you so much. Have a great day.